Hi, everybody. Rod here from the Dash Investment Foundation. And today with me, we have Michael and also Haida. And we're going to be bringing some information to you every week or every two weeks regarding what's happening inside the diff. And on the first episode, actually, I want to ask them, Michael and Haida, because they've been the longest uh, uh, supervisors uh, that are part of the diff, how all this is started, what's the main structure, and what is up on the diff lately. So welcome, guys. How are you doing? Great, hey, great. Thanks, thanks all for right. having us on. So let's start, first of all, why was the idea of the diff brought to the Dash network? Why is the diff so important? Let's start with uh, Michael. Yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself, and I'm sure Haitham will have a, uh, a different take as well. Uh, but, but from my point of view, uh, the, uh, the diff uh, is so important to the network because it allows us to take uh, uh, take out legally enforceable contracts for investment uh, in in uh, companies throughout the world in various uh, geographies, um, various um, sectors of uh, business and markets, and it allows us to, as a network, um, have some control over the. The money that we uh, take from the treasury and and in, invest into to grow in the network. So, so the diff is a fantastic legal mechanism by which we can control um, uh, what what we're effectively grants from the network, and hopefully retain and grow residual value in the network um, as the years and decades go by. So that that's my take on what the diff is and what it's what it's there to do. Um, do you have anything to add, Hayden? Um, you kind of uh, covered pretty much um, everything, but it's basically an oversight, uh, to advocate as an investment and oversight function for the network, right? Um, we went through several years of, uh, of uh, um, DAO funding where the DAO basically just paid and hoped something happened. And that, that process wasn't working. So uh, this, uh, the Dash Investment Foundation, which uh, as, as Michael mentioned, was it was a, a baby of Ryan's, uh, which is now being taken over or, or run by a larger group of the community, um, basically allows us to dedicate uh, investments to um, different locations, different businesses that come off as, as possibly successful or can help Dash uh, improve its standing in, in the market or investments in in um, that give us a strategic advantage or uh, if we need an entity to sign a contract that can't happen through the regular DAO software uh, and we need a, an enforceable contract somewhere the diff can step in for for that kind of uh, for that kind of project or event yeah I think that's important because we've seen in the past that some proposal owners took uh, a substantial amount of uh, funds from the Treasury deliver a very weak project or sometimes no project at all and the network had no legal basis to actually defend themselves and and i always see now the diff as a shield against uh, uh future uh, uh, um, let's say attitudes like this so having this whole structure uh set up so also very important uh michael if you can explain to us once uh the diff presents a proposal and the funds are approved and goes to the diff. Who manages the money and who has access to it? Okay, the um, uh, there are two parts to the diff in terms of the way it's um, way it's structured legally. Uh, you have the uh, the supervisors, uh, which are voted in uh, by the network annually, um, um, and then you have the directors of the company, the legal company itself, uh, which is. Uh, a Cayman's registered company, and those directors are um, uh, are appointed by the the supervisors uh, and uh, are are there to run run the company day to day and to uh, take care of all the fiduciary um, requirements of running a an enterprise on on, on the Cayman Islands. Uh, so, in answer to your, in answer to your question, <laughs> um, the uh, the directors alone have control of the funds uh, that are that are uh, granted to the Dash Investment Foundation by the network. Uh, they are the only people who have control of the funds, and uh, they are the only people who will ever have control of the funds 
uh, in that respect. Uh, so at the moment, it's we have we have bank accounts, uh, U.S. bank account. Uh, we have hardware wallets. We have custody accounts for, um, and we have cryptocurrency accounts with Kraken and the major cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, and between between all of those, the, the, the funds are spread and. Um, we cannot do anything without without uh, the directors uh, uh, actually executing for us. So, um, yeah. So certainly, when it comes to um, movement of funds like that, um, the actual actual trading on on, on crypto exchanges and things like that uh, that can be that can be delegated. Uh, but, but it's all very it's all very secure. Hi there. And one, th one thing I'd like to add, I, I, for, I think we forgot to mention also, this is uh, an ownerless, memberless uh, foundation company. So it's not a, there are two classes of corporations on the Cayman. There's the corporation, uh, the, the regular corporation and the foundation company. And the foundation company is kind of like a trust. So it's a special kind of company that is basically built for, for these kind of projects where there is no, uh, the, the beneficiary can be anybody and it's not owned by anybody, and it, it's a legal entity that stands on its own. So this is not something that's owned by uh, one of the, the any uh, dash company. Like it's not owned by DCG or by Ryan or anything, any other, anybody like that. It's uh, ownerless and memberless, and for the benefit of the dash network. So it's in, written the contract that set up the company or this foundation was that this is for the anything that can is for the benefit of the dash network uh, can be invested in or can be done. Um, and that's one of the main differentiators is there is no, the money that comes in, none of the supervisors have any benefit to it. Everything is basically, it, it operates like a trust. Um, but as it under it's King, basically Law, a, it's a trust. foundation company. Yeah. yeah, it's basically a trust. Very interesting. So is it, is it correct to say that, for example, if the diff invest in, in a certain company and owns part of this company, is it right to say that the Dash protocol, the Dash network owns a company and nobody owns the Dash protocol. Is that r correct to say? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I effectively, so. yes. Uh, the, uh, with it being ownerless and memberless, uh, the, the living will, for want of a better word, of the trust, uh, you know, let, let's call it a trust and a living will, um, all wrapped into a company wrap a foundation company wrap because that's effectively what it is. Um, the Cayman Islands legal structure is unique in offering this. It's, it's a relatively new company structure. Um, I believe only the Cayman uh, do it or certainly only the Cayman Islands did it at the time at which we were setting this up. So, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's so in terms of the living will uh, for the for the com for the company, the trust, uh, the uh, the only thing that we can do um, is, if, if the diff was to be wound up, for want of a better word, uh, is to uh, liquidate all assets to US dollars and buy Dash with it. Um, that, 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 that is basically our, uh, our, our living will. So if the diff has to wind up for any reason, uh, which we don't anticipate, that you know, hopefully the diff will, will be, exist for as long as the network does, which is forever, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, but that's the living will mechanism. So so we already have provision for that. Uh, so so if you if you take that, then the logical extension is that the the, the ultimate beneficiary is the network because uh, we will buy the dash, we will we will burn the dash, proof of burn, and uh, that will reduce the amount of dash in circulation, and that would effectively um, uh, increase increase the the market cap. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The value of the value of the network. Um, very, very, the very interesting. Is there is there any other example of something like this related to blockchain that we've seen around, or this is something unique? I've not seen anything uh, like this. Um, we've had one or two other projects ask ask us how we've done it. <laughs> They're quite interesting. Quite interested. Um, I won't. I won't name them. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I'm not aware of any of any other um, uh, project in the space, any other cryptocurrency in the space that has has this kind of um, investment foundation element to uh, 
to its treasury and decentralized governments. I don't know whether you're aware of anything, Heidi. And that's been running for two years now. And we've been running for two years now. So we've got a, we're starting to build up momentum in, in uh, the assets that we have and the investments that we're making. And uh, I think pretty, like pretty soon the Dash Investment Foundation, you're going to start seeing uh, some, some pretty decent results, some pretty nice results um, in the investments that are happening in the space. Very nice. So explain to us, Haydn, how is the decision making process? For example, we agree that there is a potential company that will benefit the Dash Network and we decided to invest in that company. Explain to us, how does this take place? So basically, we, we contact the company or the contact, co company contacts us uh, through the, the, the group leader, the team, team rep uh, at, at the moment is Darren. Um, and then we, as a group, sit down and, and have a meeting and we go through a Zoom call where we talk with the CEO of the company and we get information about the project or the business or uh, the, and then uh, at a later date, we get more deeper financials. And if we decide to invest in the project, we go through a vote. We go through a supervisor vote. Um, and with the majority uh, wins, basically. So if we get um, right, uh, the majority of the supervisors to agree to invest uh, based on financials and uh, this, uh, honestly, a lot of times it depends on the CEO. Like I personally look at the CEO as a, for deliverables. If, if this is an individual that, individual that can actually deliver versus someone, it's not just for me, it's not about the, just about the company, it's about the CEO, and mostly about the CEO. If I feel the CEO can get something delivered and done, um, then I think I, I tend to uh, vote for a project that I, uh, the people behind the project, basically. Very nice. Michael, once, once the decision is made, we have five supervisors. That they are appointed by, through election uh, system, uh, voted by the master nodes. So once these five supervisors decided to, let's go ahead, let's invest in this company. Explain to us, how does the payments uh, takes place. The money already came from the treasury, is already safe uh, in the DIF account, but not everybody yeah. has access to this. Who says, okay, let's go ahead and let's pay and let's do a promotion marketing. Uh, let's tell everybody what we've been doing. Okay. Uh, broadly how it works, um, every it's, it's a case by case basis, but, but this is, this is kind of the standard flow is we, uh, we would have a, would have a due diligence period with with the uh, opportunity with the investment opportunity uh, we would uh, we would all analyze and, and and look at the look at the data to, to the, uh, look at the deal on on offer uh, look at the legals look at the legal terms we would send all of that information to our directors and our council on the Cayman Island and uh, they they will look through it as well and they will look for any red flags or any potential legal issues or or anything that, that may have been missed by by the supervisors and uh, once we are happy with uh, happy with the deal on offer and the terms and uh, uh, and we get we get broad support with you know over a vote then we will instruct the directors of the company to uh, to sign the contract, sign the investment contract, and process all the, the legal work that's required in order to execute that uh, that deal. Uh, as part of that process, it would probably involve a rebalancing of our of our reserves uh, to ensure that we have enough U.S. dollars on our balance sheet to fund the deal, uh, and then our directors would. Uh, would send the monies over. They would they would process the swift payment um, of the wire uh, and yeah. And then once the monies uh, have been received by the the company that we've invested in, uh, we'll get a finalised um, uh, contract. And yeah, we, we're then proud owners of uh, of, a, of a percentage of that, that that company. So that's that's pretty much exactly how it works. Uh, there are some variations depending on the type of contract. Uh, some sometimes it's a safe agreement, and sometimes it's it's uh, a standard um, uh, standard investment round or series round. But uh, yeah, uh, we won't go into that. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> but, but but broadly, broadly speaking, that's that's the process, and the directors are very much involved in in, in all of that process. And Haydn, give us a quick peek. How does the five uh, members of the DIF get together? And uh, why? How many hours they put together 
in, in they focus on the diff and also explain to the network that the diff supervisors are actually volunteers they don't get any financial incentive to be part of this yeah so all of us are volunteers um uh i volunteered and uh, michael volunteered and you're volunteering we're all volunteers no one's getting any financial pay for this um we do this because we want to see open source projects succeed we want to see dash succeed we want to see uh, improvements on the, uh, happen within the ecosystem um so yeah for us it's it's uh, we're all volunteers and we all work together i spend maybe about uh let's say about 10 hours a week seven to ten hours a week as a volunteer just basically uh but honestly it's stuff i would do anyway like for me i i enjoy this so for me i research projects i i uh i i actually do enjoy this so for me it's not a it's not a an effort like i i it's was not, it's not a chore, I volunteer. Right? <laughs> yeah it's not a chore i was doing this already right for myself so i kind of just enjoy doing the the process through a, a collaborative team effort and you get to meet some of the best people, man. Like I, um, you know, if we have problems, um, we basically try and, and just ping each other to solve it, right? Like uh, um, I believe, uh, you know, like I, I don't remember who uh, um, uh, mentioned uh, having uh, you on the team, Rodrigo. Like uh, we, we try and find people that are that are that can add value, and we try and bring them into the fold, and and uh, and we get to working together, right? Like. Uh, that, that's for me that's what it is it's all volunteer and for for the love of doing it right very nice well um darren darren tap was the one who mentioned to invite me to be part of the the, the, the supervisor team elections are coming up uh shortly as well we got to be announced here on the official social medias of the dash investment foundation so actually i will invite everybody to follow us on twitter uh, instagram uh, YouTube, all the social medias, I'm going to leave available on the link on the description of the video. Uh, my role as well as a supervisor, because I know video, so I'll be actually the one conducting a weekly or maybe every two weeks podcast with Hayden and other DIFF members as well, bringing the latest information to the masternode, uh, uh, to the masternode owners, to the network, to the national network, and of course, giving all the transparency of how the DIFF operates, because now that the legal structure is set, we already have five companies that we've been dealing for the past few weeks. It's a long process. We got to record a podcast explaining as well the step by steps that we have to follow in order to look for a company, have a presentation, do the voting, decide to invest or not, the whole dual diligence process, the legal aspect, contract reviews. It's a process that takes at least, at least five to 10 weeks per company and we are actually on a pipeline now with uh, five different companies uh, uh, that we got to be announcing soon those partnerships for me it's got to be a privilege as well to host the podcast and represent the diff and we definitely got to bring you some more information soon so i'd like michael and hyden to actually say some final words to uh, our dash network please go ahead michael okay um well as Hytham pointed out before, the reason we're doing this uh, is it is voluntary. We're not we're not receiving any pay for this. Uh, we're doing this because, uh, uh, well, I'm certainly doing it because I believe that the Dash Investment Foundation um, has a huge amount of potential uh, for for Dash and 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 for decentralized crypto uh, in the future. It's it's a model that can be copied um, by other by other projects. And I, I think that um, I think it's going to be great to to build what is effectively the world's first decentralized hedge fund um, using using Dash. And um, the, the beauty about that is that, that the, the more treasury, uh, that the higher the price of Dash goes, the more treasury is available and, and the more and more interesting things the diff can do. Uh, we. There are no limits to what the diff can do and what what it can invest in, um, as long as the remit to invest in things that's going to benefit the network is there. So, uh, so it's it's an ex it's going to be an exciting year. And um, if if the deals that we've already done, which are yet to be announced, some of them, uh, are we anything can't to go wait. By then. We can't wait, people. We've had, uh, we have anything to go anything. by. But we have to wait for the whole legal uh, yeah. approval to then make the announcement. So stay tuned, people. You can yeah. see three smiles. We know. <laughs> we know, and uh, so so that's why I'm really excited. <laughs> that's why I'm really excited about what we're doing because I I know that I know that we can we can 
creates so much value for the network. And we can do it in, in a way that's legally legally enforceable by the network. The network has control, over, complete control over the diff. It decides, you know, it has annual elections. It can decide who runs the diff. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's got, it's an extremely powerful um, model and uh, yeah. Stay tuned. And the cool yeah. thing about the cool thing about the DAO, the Dash DAO, is that if if this project for any reason, like if the DAO wants to spin up a ton of these different investment pro investment funds, we can do that, right? The Dash DAO yeah. is this is not a hard coded uh, pro this is not some hard coded fund that goes into the protocol. This is if you don't like this, you can, we can do another another companies that do other things, and and we can branch out into a lot of different aspects, right? So this is this is very yeah. exciting. And I think 2021 and 2022 are going to be amazing. I'm really excited. Yeah, Dash being able to own potentially billion dollar companies yeah. is, is huge. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. It's, it's a brand new concept, everybody, where basically a computer program, a protocol owns a corporation, a physical corporation with real employees generating uh, some sort of income or, or whatever they generate. So we actually are exploring more and more what we can do. And we're going to be announcing some very good, uh, interesting news very soon. So make sure you follow our social media. Once again, I'd like to thank you, uh, Michael and Hyatt, for being present. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao for now.